tech companies. So stole this has been like a big issue for a while. Voice artists are suing tech companies for stealing their voices. This is what's going to happen. It's happening a lot. Ooh, it's happening all the time. And you know what? It is just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse. A tech company stole our voices, made clones yeah. of them as AI clones, mm -hmm. and sold them possibly hundreds of thousands of times. Yeah. This is Paul and Linnea, voiceover actors mm -hmm. based in New York City. Yeah. Last summer, they were in the car listening to a podcast about the Hollywood writer strike yeah. and how it might affect VO artists like them sure. when something strange happened. This specific episode, the host was going to interview an AI entity mm -hmm. about the potential harm that AI will have on the entertainment industry. That's clever. And he is interviewing my voice. <laughs> That's funny. How, how do you think it's your voice? How do you know it's your voice? Because like, I, I know plenty of people that sound like me. How do they know it's you? Good morning. Is it okay with you if I call you Poe? Absolutely. Billy, feel free to call me Poe. Yeah. As a generative AI technology- How disturbing and terrifying that moment was is hard to articulate. I spent six hours on the internet that night, mm -hmm. searching as many text to speech- Of course speech. you know. Like, I mean, here's the thing, right? I don't see it. What I'm saying is like, let's say you get somebody that has, or you AI generate a voice that sounds 95% like somebody else. It's obvious that like, that's not the same thing as taking their voice. That's like saying two people that talk the same, one person has ownership over it. Obviously, that's not true. Everybody knows that's not true. Uh, products that I could find and listening to yeah. all of the voices that they offered until mm -hmm. I stumbled upon Lovo. Lovo are this company, yeah. a Berkeley-based text-to-speech platform. Just type what you want to hear. Uh -huh. And one of dozens of synthetic voices like this one. Or maybe this one. Or this one will read it back I see in a matter a of lot. seconds. But once she started poking around the company's site, mm -hmm. Linnea said she found an AI voice that sounded just like Paul. I mean, I, I was stunned. I couldn't believe it. And out of pure uh -huh. curiosity, I just started listening to the other voices thinking... I was like, how are you going to prove that? Like, I, I just like, I, I feel like, yeah, what do you think? How the hell you even prove that? Maybe I'll recognize someone I know, a colleague from the yeah. voiceover world. And that's when I stumbled upon my voice. So in May, Paul and Linnea filed a class action lawsuit against Lovo, Ooh. saying the company illegally stole their voices and identities without permission or proper compensation. That's crazy to say that it got stolen because it sounds like you. That's crazy that you could just say that it got stolen like with no... Uh, like no discovery, no evidence really. Like your evidence is that I heard it and it sounds like me. You see what I'm saying? Company has not yet filed a response. Yeah. I so why. how did this even happen? So in October of 2019, a freelancing site that I'm on where I regularly procure voiceover work yeah. reached out to me asking if I would record some scripts for them. Mm -hmm. A couple say the scripts were generic radio ads, ones yeah. the user said would never be broadcast, so they didn't need expensive usage rights. They uh -huh. were quite generic. You know, do you need a dry cleaner in Idaho? We're here, right around the corner, your 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 neighborhood dry cleaner. Yeah. Paul says about six months later, he got a similar request to record dozens of generic sounding radio scripts. In messages the couple shared with the BBC, you can see the user appears to say the audio will be used for research into speech synthesis. Mm -hmm. Paul follows up to clarify whether the audio will be used for anything other than their specific research. In the next message, the user then appears to confirm the audio will not be used for anything else. Well, I mean, did they really? Anything else? And I can't tell you the goal, so it's a confidential work in progress. Well, what did it say? Guarantee the scripts will not be used in anything other than your specific research project. What if they're researching AI? Message, the user then appears yeah. to confirm the audio will not be used There's for no anything way. else. Yeah. And then I, I asked, will you be changing the order of my audio or using it in any separate way? And they said no. As for Linnea, she says the user she spoke with deleted part of the conversation. <laughs> but in the communications that remain, oh. it appears the user presents the scripts as test radio ads, yeah. ones that will not be disclosed externally. The couple said there was no formal contract, just these messages they've shared with us. Yeah. We can't, however, verify if these are the complete conversations. In both cases, though, the couple recorded the audio, sent the mm -hmm. files, and moved on. Right. Sure. We only need a person to read 50 sentences. 
And I believe that's something an average Joe could do. The voice you're hearing is Tom Lee, mm -hmm. co-founder of Lovo, speaking on a business podcast about how their voice cloning technology works. That's smart. We can capture the, the tone, the character, mm -hmm. the style, the phonemes, and, and how you even, you know, if you have an accent, we can even capture that. I don't think it's that good yet. Like, it's good, but it's not that good. As well. It's all right. We reached out to Lovo on multiple occasions mm -hmm. to request an interview with Mr. Lee. We also asked for any yeah. correspondence or conversations they may have with Paul and Linnea. Mm -hmm. They did not respond to any of our messages. What a surprise. So what's going on in the voice actor cases are a field of law known as rights of publicity. Mm -hmm. The thing that's being copied is not a piece of copyrighted work, but a piece of someone's personality, right? And so yeah. then we get these personality rights or rights of publicity where the allegation is not you copied my song or you copied my drawing, but rather you copied my voice. Professor Garcia also says the licenses the couple granted the user who contacted uh -huh. them may have also been violated. Licenses are um, permission for a very specific and narrow use. Yeah, right? sure. I might give you a license that you can swim in my swimming pool one afternoon, but that doesn't mean you can come whenever you want and have a party in my swimming pool, yeah, sure. right? That would exceed the terms of the license. Um, and I think that would be the argument for these voice actors here. The voices have since been removed from the company's website. But an ad still exists online where Paul's supposed voice clone can be heard. Uh -huh. So I sat down with a couple to take a listen Let's hear myself. It. Introducing Jenny by Lovo. Oh. Artificial intelligence that makes it fast and easy to create voiceovers for marketing, e-learning, documentaries, animations, games, audiobooks, and more. That's pretty decent. Introducing Jenny by Lovo. Artificial intelligence that makes it fast and easy to create voiceovers for marketing, e-learning, documentaries, animations, games, audiobooks, and more. Yeah, it's pretty close. When we all thought True. of AI in the future, we yep, thought that's close. AI is going to be folding our laundry and making mm -hmm. us dinner. We didn't think AI is going to replace human beings' creative endeavors. Well, I mean, wouldn't AI folding your laundry and cooking you dinner replace the jobs of laundromats and cooks? It's weird how people put like a different type of value premium on creative work and they never even think about what that does too. Oh, we thought it was only going to take poor people's jobs away and not our, you know, higher class job. And so now it's a bad thing. What a silly, like, what a silly worldview. This case is just one of many being brought against AI companies by mm -hmm. artists who don't want to lose control of their work and livelihoods. Right. And more are likely to come. We really have no other choice but to stand up and give our energy to this because when companies develop technology that way, it's not mm -hmm. innovation anymore. It's just exploitation. Well, it is innovation. So people get mad about this. And I, I know voice actors are getting mad about this. If I was a voice actor, I'd be really fucking mad about it because like this is going to put me out of a fucking job. Like that's the reality and everybody knows that's what's going to happen. So yeah, when you pirate a game movie, it's legal. Giant corporations are allowed to do this with little to no consequence. Yeah, exactly. David Attenborough advertising dodgy financial products on YouTube six months ago. Uh, a few years ago, they removed the sound on one of my videos, said it was copyrighted. It was just me. Voice actors have been removed. As always, is an admission of guilt. No, it's not. That they're just going to take that off there so they can't, uh, you know, scale uh, the damages, right? It's common sense. Uh, what's this here? The last line is innovation. It's, it's exploitation. Uh, I just, like, I feel like, again, uh, the privilege of a lot of these people really gets shown when, like, that woman says, oh, I thought it was actually just going to take away the jobs of low-skilled workers and people that I think are below me doing menial tasks and not my high-value tasks that I put a high premium of. Like, that's, I think that that really goes to show what a lot of people feel, right? That part, yeah, exactly. And so she didn't say that. She did, though. She did. Like, that's a job that a human has. Human beings have those jobs. Like, there are people with those jobs. And if you have technology that could do that job instead, then you're going to pick technology instead. Right? I mean, like, at the bottom, at the end of the day, like, that's really what's going on. The difference is something as voice acting is a job that someone wants to do. Nobody wants to spend their life doing laundry. Uh, so, so now, like, n now it's like, so nobody wants to do this. So that's why uh, it's okay to, like, take their job away. So the problem is that what does that really have to do with it? 
So like, for example, there are plenty of people that take part in creative endeavors that don't have any sort of tangible benefit to society. So at the end of the day, the problem with voice actors losing this job is the fact that it's a job. Nobody's stopping them from being voice actors in their own time. They can still be voice actors or do whatever they want. But the difference is that now they, uh, you know, they can't make money off of it. So if the real problem isn't really AI, it's actually the money that they can make from the AI, then it wouldn't really matter whether it was voice acting or folding clothes, would it, logically? Because the problem and like the fundamental issue here is that AI is making it to where things that people do to make money are no longer functional and you can no longer make money with those things. That's the actual problem. The problem isn't that AI is taking the job. The problem is that you need the job to make money. That's the actual issue. And that's what I think people aren't really understanding. The job argument, yeah, that's the real reason. Like, for example, there's plenty of people who practice art who do things that are like, like there are artists who try to capture photorealism. Like, guess what happened to photorealistic art when cameras were invented? Right? Obviously, of course. So that doesn't stop somebody from pursuing it as a creative endeavor. So AI doesn't stop these people from pursuing voice acting as a creative endeavor, but it does stop them from get doing it as a job. So the, whether, the fact whether you enjoy it or not isn't really part of the conversation. Most of the people do these chores themselves is what she's saying. Yeah, but not everybody does. Yeah, not everybody. There are plenty of people that hire maids, and it's undeniable that if you had a service like a Roomba or something like that that was extremely cost-efficient, uh, that, that would lower the amount of people that were able to do maid services. Yeah, rich people, exactly. Yeah, sure. But like what I'm saying, like dry cleaners, there's always components to this. There, it, it's always a zero-sum. Like, that's what I think people don't understand. Most people do those chores themselves, that's what she's saying. Yeah, but the thing is that who wouldn't do the chores themselves if they could just have a robot do it? I think that she's only thinking about it from, like, her own limited worldview that is involving her and how she does it. I don't do this so it doesn't affect me. And that, that's, that's the whole point that I'm making, right? Is that it's completely self-centered. It's totally self-centered to the point to where she doesn't even conceptualize the idea that in the same way that technology is taking away her job, her hope for technology would be taking away somebody else's job as well. And that's the, that's the history of technology. It's just people like this are delusional and they think that they have these high status jobs and they want to protect those high status jobs because they don't want to have to find another job that they're not skilled in. Uh, that's the reason why.